Oh, Lord. Hello and Allah Apa. God is glorious, the Baha'i greeting to all the people of the planet. Time is basically 11 o'clock. Today is 20, 20th of October 2012. Mm. For the record. Uh, I was sick for the last few days. Uh, my body is uh, just getting weaker and weaker. And nowadays my desires also is coming to an end. Uh, this is becoming like a chore. So, uh, I'm going to the last uh, valley, or the last portion of the seven valleys of uh, Baha'u'llah, a very profound tablet that explains the procedures uh, to reach the presence of God. So, it reads, uh, uh, as usual, I'm going to have some revision of some of these words, simply to render a better meaning. And uh, I will briefly explain some of the concept. Uh, I should be keeping an eye on my watch not to go more than one hour. If it had to go more, then we'll have to speak twice, two times on this. But I would have to uh, uh, have an overall explanation besides this. So, it is revealed. After scaling the high summits of wonderment, which I said should be bewilderment, the wayfarer cometh to the valley of the true poverty and absolute nothingness. Well, this name definitely um, has to be changed. This absolute nothingness is absurd, really. So, um, that's a wrong translation. I've explained that before. Uh, poverty really it means uh, to be cleansed from all the dirt of the material attachment to you in this absolute nothingness it really means selflessness so I have changed this valley of true poverty and essential selflessness it becomes selfless you know your ego goes away it becomes selfless and then the self of God will activate you know in you you have the capacity so this station is the dying from self well I've changed it to annihilations of ego at any point of time Baha'u'llah or even the Sufis of the past they did not mean that the self would have man have to be annihilated or gone so the self of God comes in this place. That's not true at all. We're always a vegetable. We're always an animal. We're always human. We could be something more than human. A different selfhood to activate within our system. It's not to kill the animal self or a vegetable self or a human self. This self is really that ego that we have to get rid of it, which is a dirt in front of the activations of another part within us that makes us to gain a, another character, another selfhood, which is something in between a human and a prophet of God. It's not like prophet and manifestation of God. It's more like a photocopy of the actual, you know, truth. So, we're going to change this. This station is the dying from self. No, dying from self has to be annihilations of ego. And the living in God has to be changed and immortalizing by God. So I should read it in the new revision. This station is the annihilations of ego and immortalizations, immortalizing by God. The being poor in self and rich in the desired one. I have changed even that, I've said that. This is about the 
impoverishment of ego and enrichment by God. Poverty is here referred to signifieth being poor in the things of the created world. No, not of the created world, in the things of the world of mankind. See, mankind has a lot of things that uh, we should be poor of it. You know, <clears throat> such wealth is nothing but dirt on us. Rich in the things of God's world. For when the true lover and the devoted friend reach to the presence of beloved, the sparkling beauty of the loved ones, in here it means beloved, and the fire of the lover's heart will kindle a blaze and burn away all veils and wrappings. Yeah, all he hath from heart to skin will be set aflame, so that nothing will remain save the friend, which means again God. And then the line, you know, a reference to what burning bush is, really, this poem has been written, Baha'u'llah quotes. When the qualities of the ancient days stood revealed, then the qualities of earthly things did Moses burn away. Uh, it says that uh, Moses was in the situation that he had to burn away those things in order to get to God. Of course, this is not a reference to Moses. Moses is the manifestation of God like Baha'u'llah. We would not understand who really he is. But he's just trying to create a copy for us. Continues. He who had attained this station and sanctified from all that pertained to the world, wherefore, if those who have come to the sea of his presence are found no possess, uh, found to possess none of the limited things, of this perishable world, whether it be outer wealth or personal opinion, no, personal opinion change it to material thought, whether it be outer wealth or material thoughts, it mattereth not. For whatever the creatures have is limited by. Here, creatures really means people. So, creatures have is limited by, change it. For whatever the people possess is related to their own limits, and whatever the true one, which means God really, whatever God had is sanctified therefrom. This utterance, I change the utterance to subject, this subject must be deeply pondered that its purport may clear. Okay, let's ponder on that. Okay, I've always said uh, Baha'u'llah does not ask where are you coming from. To him it doesn't matter what was your past. He's asking where are you going to. Where are you coming from is irrelevant to God. You can come from anywhere to him. But where are you going to in the life it matters. The real purport or meaning, significance of this is that Whatever we have, and whatever we're going to learn, everything really ends finally to the truth, to God, if we are able to continue, if we live more than 70 years, many of us, we need centuries. Uh, so, this is that, it doesn't matter where is this coming from, how much you have, what was your thinking. All those things, it seems to be a uh, a tools to facilitate you to get there. So when you get there, it doesn't matter if you came by train or by plane, you came by car or you walk, you were on donkey or you were fly. When you get there, those things, it doesn't matter. So, There is a verse translated very close to those of that of the Shovi FND. Verily the righteous shall drink of a wine cup tempered at a camphor fountain. Shogi's translation it says, The righteous shall drink of a cup tempered at the camphor fountain. A little bit wrong. The verily is not in the writing of Shogi. So, if the interpretations of camphor really it's not interpretation, it had to be the significance. 
a change in temperature to significance. If the significance of camphor become known, the true intention will be evident. This state is that the poverty of which it is said, poverty is my glory. No, glory is a wrong word. It has to be said, poverty is my honor. Muhammad said, Al-Faqr Fakhri. Fakhr means honor. Glory means ezat. So, Muhammad actually meant, he said that, poverty is my honor. And of inward and outward poverty, there is many a stage and many of a meaning which I have not thought pertained to the mention to mention here. Hence, I have reserved this for another time, depending on what God may desire and fate may seal. This meaning of camphor. Camphor is some kind of a white stuff that is a I know the depressant in Iran I heard that they're giving it to the soldiers so their sexual desires will you know slow down in Quran there is such a thing instead of the word camp for another uh, verse is there it says tempered uh, uh, at the camphor fountain it says tempered with ginger so camphor and ginger both of them have been used. Ishaq Havari, the greatest Baha'i scholars, he has in his encyclopedia, he says these two verses are in Quran, that this high and low, those are really, really cold, they give them ginger, and they're very, very uh, hot, God gives them, you know, camphor. This interpretation, significance of this, is to create a balance. This is in the teaching of Buddha, you know. That balance and focus is necessary. That is what camphor here is. It is that balancing power that balances your camera. You're able to focus. If you're focused, the light goes through the holes. If not, it will not. So, I'm not going to go too much into it. And uh, poverty, again, as I mentioned here, uh, it really means to be cleansed from what is called wealth. Uh, this material wealth in the spiritual realm is really uh, is like a weight. If you want to, uh, you know, if in the balloon, have you seen when the balloon goes down? But they do. They try to take the stuff off the balloon, throw it down in order so the weight goes down, the balloon can ascend. If it doesn't ascend, if it's falling down. So, in the spiritual realm is the same way. If you want to ascend up, there are a lot of things lingering in your mind. You've installed a lot of attachment to. Every attachment is like a rope attached to. You want to own 50 houses, you have to remember every one of them, whether you like it or not, is an attachment to you will not let you to concentrate and listen to me. To the point you get to be disappointed and you think I'm crazy talking about this stuff. Okay, so we know the poverty means Things that are stopping your balloon, your soul to go up, so you have to take it down. This is the plane. I translate a stage. This is the stage where on the vestige, vestiges, I said multitude, of all things. She has translated kul shai. Kul means everything, shai means everything. Things. So kul shai means everything. This has been uh, used by Bob millions of times in his writing, Kulashai. Actually the word, uh, you know, is an acronym for 360 days. That's what it is. So, this is the stage where on the multitude of all things are destroyed, no, are vanished in traveler. And at the horizon of eternity, the divine face riseth out of darkness. And the meaning, of all on the earth shall pass away by the face of thy Lord. All things are translated as all things obliterate except his countenance is made manifest. This is a reference to the verse of Quran, of course. So, <coughs> this everything is getting destroyed. It is uh, 
vanishing in Traveller. It is an understanding of the Euclidean mathematics that to change your natural mathematics. In Euclidean mathematics, uh, 1 plus 1 is 2. In the natural mathematics, there's no such things really. After two apples, and we say one apple here, another apple, two an apple, therefore we have two apples. I ask which apples? These two apples are different. We have two of the first one or two of the second one. And one apple is uh, 20 gram, 100 gram. The other apple might be 101 gram. So if we have two apples, do we have 200 grams or 201? So one plus one in natural way is not really two. Sometimes one million is equal to one. One Canadian plus another Canadian plus another Canadian plus another Canadian plus another Canadian plus 30, 35 million Canadian is equal to one nation. You see? It depends how you play with the word. <laughs> but this mathematical understanding that we have of the material, we, we think Euclidians, you know, we have triangle, we have rectangle, we have circle, we have oval. And the nature is not like this. Nature does not repeat itself. It cannot be two circles exactly the same. There's no perfect circle anyways. So, we are Euclidean, nature is not. This view of the natural way of looking at things replaces this Euclidean view. This is why this all and one and one and all is just vanishes uh, to the person. Oh my friend, listen with the heart and the soul to the oh my friend, listen with the heart and the soul to the songs of the spirit and treasure that must thine own eyes. For the heavenly wisdom like the clouds of a spring will not rain down on the earth. Now, on the surface of man's heart forever. Although the grace of all bounteous, and though the grace of the all bounteous one is never steeled and never ceasing, yet to each time and era a portion is allotted in a bounty set apart. This is a given measure. This in a given measure. And no one thing is there but with us, or, or its storehouse. Verse of Quran. And we send it not down, but in a settled measure, no, in a determined measure. The cloud of the loved ones, God's mercy, reigneth only on the garden of the Spirit, and bestow with this bounty only in the season of the spring. The other seasons have no share in this greatest grace and barren lands no portion of this favor. This matter, of course, is uh, uh, relative. Baha'u'llah trying to advise this single individual in the reality every time and any time uh, to become Baha'i is just as hard. I'll tell you how. It's like the gravity, you know. The weight and the speed, you know, basically proportion. That's what makes everything to fall at the same time. At the time when Baha'u'llah comes, it's very, very hard to believe in him when he says, I am the creator of the universe. If you pass by and you see, you know, a short human being, with very amazing eyes, of course, you might get impressed with some of the things he says, but very hard to believe in him. Very, very hard. His presence is like sun. When sun comes, it burns away everything. Those who can stay there are really seriously, seriously heavy duty. So, just to say, I believe in Baha'u'llah at the time when he's around, to him saying yes is equal to a time and most of the people of the earth have become Baha'i at that time 
being a Baha'i is given. Everyone says, I'm a Baha'i. So, but that day when you just said, I am a Baha'i when Baha'u'llah comes, is equal to the time when most of the people of the world are Baha'i and you're entering the Baha'i faith, as long as you definitely follow Baha'i faith fully and completely. That is how it cancels it out. Right now in Canada, to say a Baha'i, it's very easy. So, it's not as easy as in Iran to say you're a Baha'i because they kill you. To just say a word, I'm a Baha'i in Iran is equal. To be a Baha'i in Canada, as long as a Baha'i in Canada, you're 24 hours teaching. You're not separated from the faith of God. So the easiness of claiming that you're a Baha'i in Canada would have automatically have to make you to do everything in the writings. But in Iran, you don't have to, because it is so hard to just say I'm a Baha'i because there's no books even around. So all I'm trying to tell you that uh, every time, as Baha'u'llah says, every season is different. Uh, but certainly today, to say a Baha'i, before you said a Baha'i, depending on the time, it might be different. So in Iran, you have to exert a lot of things to say you're a Baha'i because they're going to kill you. And by the word I'm a Baha'i, you have to renounce a lot of things. You have to buy into a lot of things. Here, if you want to go under those pressures that those people go in Iran, then you have to start to teach. You have to force yourself into teaching and giving this and that and that and that. Then it will be the same as in Iran, of course. You see? The question is that, the word Baha'i it has to be an indication of you carrying certain quality and attributes. Okay? I don't know if I could explain to you enough or not, but that's what it is. So, uh, where were we? Okay. One point is good for you to know. Uh, surely when Baha'u'llah is not here, that is physically. According to the Baha'i writings, Baha'i principles, as you know, we say the continuation of revelations of God, progressive revelation, there is such a thing as continuations of the guardianship in the Baha'i faith, too, on page 300 in uh, Light of Guidance. Shobhi Fendi clearly says, after Baha'u'llah ascended to heaven as no body, all the time he's in presence, in the earth through his guardians, which are ordinary people, he chooses them and to go say his words. And they are the ones that they inspire the universal laws of justice. Universal laws of justice, those nine people, they're not capable of getting inspired by God. They might be, but they also might be elected uh, some uh, guys who have uh, no clue of any faith. So it would be unfair for God to reveal to them himself. How? How is this possible? This is a natural process. Uh, they're not capable of revelation. They're just elected by people. So where is this inspiration of universal laws of justice comes from, if you want to know, is through those guardians. God cannot have guardians coming all the time, revealing themselves, himself to them, and then also revealing himself to universal laws of justice. That would be a duality. Because if these two, they don't get along, then there's a problem. Right now, this is the problem. They say that if I'm inspired by Baha'u'llah saying all my words, then what's universal laws of justice? Because they don't accept my inspirations. And then they say it's fair because all the people elected them and say they have to be inspired and their inspiration is that you are wrong and you're not a Baha'i, you're enemy of Baha'u'llah, you're enemy of the faith and all that jazz. Am I really enemy of Baha'u'llah? How absurd is this? Or I'm even enemy of any assembly or any national, any local. Why would I be enemy of anything? You know, it's too hard for me to be enemy of anybody. Uh, so, or if you want to say my philosophy and my understanding is totally wrong, 
should got to be thinking twice, brother. Because I might have a different opinion, but calling me wrong and absurd and infidel. Whew, these are big, 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 big. That's just right here, telling you that simply by the matter of elections and selections by people, you know, nine guys. Who knows? Maybe at one point, one nine mafuses are getting elected to Universal House of Justice. You think they're bound uh, that to be inspired by God? That's not it. Universal House of Justice get inspired by God through guardians. This is the direct, uninterpreted word of Shoei Effendi in the uh, light of guidance. Read it for yourself. A special guardianship and their guardianship, which is the letter is talking to somebody. All right. All right, this is not all the story. So, we continue. Oh, brother, not every sea hath pearls, not every branch will flower. The word will has to be changed to bear. Not every branch bear flower, nor will the nightingale sing. No, nightingale warbles. Singing is for people. Uh, nightingales warbles thereon. Then, ere the nightingales of the mystic paradise repair to the garden, no, retreat to the garden of God, and the ray of the heavenly morning return to the Son of Truth, Make thou an effort that haply, maybe it is, in this dust heap of mortal world thou mayest catch a fragrance from the everlasting garden and live forever in the shadow of the people of this city. And when thou hast attained in this highest station and come to this mightiest plain, then shall thou gaze on the Beloved and forget all else. The Beloved shined on gate and wall without a veil, O man of vision. This gate and wall is a, a Persian expression, you know, like you say, it rains like cats and dogs. If you translate it in Persian, it will become very, you know, very funny. So, coming from the wall, and that means from everywhere. So, the beloved shine it from everywhere. Or you can say from gate and wall, you know. You can say hard range or cats and dogs, you know, same thing. So now we continue. Now hast thou abandoned no change it. Now hast thou sacrificed the drop of life, not life, the drop of your life. And come to the sea of life bestower. No. Change come to the sea of life bestower to attain the ocean of well beloved. This is the goal thou didst ask. No. Thou didst seek. For it be God's will thou wilt gain it. I change that. For God willing thou wilt attain it. So to redo this, we're looking at the watch again. Now, thou, now hast thou sacrificed a drop of your life and attained the ocean of well beloved. This is the goal thou didst seek for. God willing, thou wilt attain it. Hmm. So these are the words that gives wrong ideas lots of time to this pantheist. And they say, oh yeah, you want to drop, and now you join to the ocean. Well, if I was a drop and wasn't a part of the ocean, then God was missing some part of himself. If it wasn't missing and I joined him, God became bigger now, because there's one drop more into the ocean. you got to be careful on this. I was listening to this Mr. Dr. Hussein Elahi Qumshi, a very sweet guy on the internet, and one of the interpretations he has of this value of selflessness is that everything is God, everything is like a big garden, he says. You had a wall around your garden, 
So you took off the wall and you became a part of the garden. No. We're not going to become a part of God. In no way, Jose. This is completely wrong. In the Baha'i faith is not acceptable at all. In fact of the matter, we will never ascend over our humanity. If we do that, then we are into the evolution. No animal can become a human. No human can become messenger of God, manifestation of God. God forbid, even Baha'u'llah, which is the will of God, is not God. So we have to understand what we're talking about here. In the Baha'i faith, we don't join God. <laughs> It's not somewhere that we have to join it. No. When we talk about this uh, valley, we're really simply talking of our communications, of our connections. I've said this millions of times. Like your computer doesn't have internet, has a big computer, but is losing to a small, little, tiny, little, minute computer who's had the capacity to subscription to the internet. If this little hand phone of yours connected to the internet, I can give answers that no huge computer does not have internet connection can give. So it's about getting connected to God. It is about creating, tapping into one of your ability. You're born with it. A different selfhood. How did you tap into know that from the age 12 to 15, oh, okay, uh, this organ of yours it was not for pissing only, it's for sex. You found out. You just grow up and found out this has a different function. Same as this. You have to understand there's something in you that has a different function. You're not all the selves that you're saying you are. You're an animal, you're a vegetable. It's another self in you. You have to activate it. If you activate that, immediately contact your God. God, it becomes you in a sense that, like a TV that shows the picture of a, a, a live man on the TV. Is the TV, let's say, prime minister or a queen? No. You open the TV, it's nothing but, you know, bolt and wires and everything else. Like in my body, you open it, there's nothing but wings and blood and this and that. But there's a picture transmitting to me. The picture is transmitting to everyone at every time. It's not something that comes on and off, it's always there. Just we can catch it. We can get the picture. We're not focused. We're not tuned up. We're not, we haven't activated ourselves. That's all it is. It's not that we're joining God and becoming God or anything like this. I've explained this before. God is different from His will. His will is different from His creations. And in the, all the books says, man made God from himself. Meaning that like God, I have a willpower. Like God, I'm intelligent. I can create this camera by thinking about it and writing it down on a paper. That paper would be my word, my willing. And then the camera would be my creation. Neither of his word and instructions that says to make a camera, nor the camera, it's me. I'm different from my camera and from different and from the writing that is going to make camera. God is in the same way, okay? Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, that's the case. So, in this city, even the veils of light are split asunder and vanish away. His beauty had no veiling save light, his face no covering save a revelation. Mm. How strange that while the beloved is visible as the sun, yet the heedless still hunt after the tinsel and base metal. Money, not base metal, after money. Yeah, the intensity of his revelation had covered him, with a bracket, up. And the fullness of his shining fault had hidden him away. Very simple, you know. What is the most visible, the most 
influential, the most reason for life is sun. So much, you know, abandoned. We often forget it. Even exists, we don't look at it, we don't think about it. Sometimes that something is so much available, people don't see it. It's always the case with mankind. Mankind like to have his heroes to be dead. See this? Let's break this man. I go from here among you, and the generation after you comes, and they all celebrate me. And God knows this is the case. He hasn't brought me for you people. You're incapable of understanding me at all. So I'm talking to your children. So they come and listen to these videos and my word, they say, oh my God, they wish they were with me at this time. Then I just tell you that Baha'u'llah said the guardians were always on the planet. So I'm dead, there's another one. If you are the man of your word and honor and you think you missed an opportunity, don't worry about me, brother. In future, I'm talking to you. Go find the guardian at the time. Mm, then we know who you are. It's very hard to find me. I'm a little light. You need serious telescope to see me. I'm not like Baal, a big that is everywhere. So, it's irrelevant. It's just the nature of mankind is like this. God is trying to bring Islam for Iranian, but he knows if Muhammad comes in Iran, as the habit of mankind is, they will all deny him and kill him. So he takes him to Arabia, but there's not enough population, and God is totally disappointed that these people, anyways, are casualties. Muhammad comes there, all of them are dead, gone. There was not a single Muslim in Arabia. Except I mean, few of them that they died with Imam Hussein. But the fire of Muhammad in Saudi Arabia, in a distance from Iran, looked, gave light. The fire turned into light, you see. This is why the Iranian, they think I'm totally a crazy man. White people, some of you, this is why I'm speaking English, you might think a little different because I'm farther away from you. But if somebody comes from among yourself, another Anglo-Saxon, he says, probably going to say, uh-oh, this guy needs to go to psychiatric, seek some psychiatric help. See, how wrong can people be? That I'm so sorry for the National Spiritual Assembly of the Bahamas of Canada, which I sincerely love, to say that I am a psychotic man. What is the reason? What have I done? <laughs> Except bringing some words of wisdom. A word of difference, opinion, shall we say. Let's be modest here. For that, I should be called psychotic. And I'm an infidel? That my children shouldn't even talk to me? Think about it, people. Now, some of you say, what can we do? This is what Baha'u'llah says. You are a stupid, you imbecile, if you think that's what Baha'u'llah said. Okay? You are using Baha'i faith and all this and means like a sword of the Damocles, hitting the people again. Okay? You're using it to shun people away, shun them down. Anyways, where are we? I'm getting close to one hour. I hope I can finish this. Even as the sun bright had shined, but Alice, he had come to the town of the blind. All right. So let's hear it. In this valley the wayfarer liveth behind him the stages, I change it to the idea, of the oneness of being and manifest manifestation. Being and manifestation, we change the idea of the oneness of the world of existence and beyond. 
and riches of oneness that is sanctified above these two stations. Ecstasy alone can encompass this theme, not utterance nor argument. I change this. This ecstasy alone, I change it to inspired intuition is required to fathom, not the words of argument. And whosoever had dwelt at this stage of journey or caught a breath from the garden land knoweth, no, change it to understandeth, whereof we speak. All right. Okay, let's continue the second paragraph and then I'll say my opinion. In all this journey, the traveler must stray not the breath of the hair from the law, for this is indeed the secret of the path and the fruit of the tree of the truth. And in all these stages, he must cling to the robe of obedience to the commandment and hold fast to the cord of shunning all forbidden things, that he may be nourished from the cup of the law and informed of the mysteries of the truth. Well, of course, if you're going to God, <clears throat> you can't choose any other ways except the ways that he says, hey guys, you want me? I'm here. This is my address. Baha'i is the address to God. You know, you want to go to a certain website, choose your address. Baha'i is that. Now you're saying to God, okay, God, I know you're there, but I'm not going to go that way, okay? I have another way, better. Well, that would be very, very stupid to say to God that he has come here, you know, sacrificed the blood of 25,000 people, uh, wrote 150, 500 books, revealed 500 books, took 113 years for divine author, and all of that to you is not appealing. Or you think there's an alternative. Brother, if that is your claim, claim it right now that you are way bigger than Baha'u'llah. It would be really seriously, it's that bad, you know, that um, you want to go somewhere you don't know where, and your phone and they give you an address and you want to go differently. That's what it means. So there's no other way except to go to the river. But this word of obedience and this and that when it comes in the writing, some of the people, especially young, they say, oh, obedience, obedience to who? No, no, this is not obedience in that way. This obedience of the laws is uh, obedience to what uh, is good for you. The writing of Baha'u'llah is the prescriptions. It's not an idea, it's not philosophy, it's none of that. This is the prescription of a doctor. If you want to go to him, of course, you have to use that. But something happens at the end, though. So, as you are going to these seven valleys, you're out there all the way, now, per se, you reach to the end. You are now past all these valleys. Do you need all these laws? Not really. I call you graduate. They call Sufis. In the Baha'i faith, I call it graduations. This curriculum of God, Baha'i faith, it is possible that one, before he dies, in this life, completely finish it all out. Pass it before he dies. What would that guy do? Let's say I finish the university right now, I'm a doctor. So my advice to the people is that not to go to university, <laughs> not to go to a school. Do I tell them that all of these ways that I went was wrong? No, of course not. The best it happens that I will come and help Baha'u'llah to send every other kids to the university, to go through the education process. But do myself, as a past, how do I live my life? All these laws, am I bound by these laws after that? After you are reaching to the, becoming the manifestation of God, manifestation of Baha'u'llah, not really. But ironically, you will never break them. You don't. 
even if you do, you have to, you must or whatever, you will not call that as a credit. You simply see that something uh, falter away and you know how to repair it. There's no point that any PhD holder, any doctor, any body who passed from the school come back and say what's happening in the school is actually who is for the stupid people. He would never say that because he knows it's not true. So there is a graduation process. At that point, different things sets in. Baha'u'llah does not live with his own rules. But you, when are living among the Baha'is, what Baha'u'llah goes in the road and drink them and he says, oh no, I can drink and others can. Of course he won't. Because these things are not dictations of a dictator to people who enjoys it, no. These things are simply as good as the water is good for you, poison is bad for you. These are prescriptions. These are prevention measures. Everyone follows it. Baal has revealed something that he wouldn't do it himself. Okay. Of course, there are people, uh, let's say another example, they're like 007, your James Bond. He works for the government. He might do other measures at a time that are different for a time being. He could. A Baha'i teacher is uh, using a lot of exceptional things. To drink blood, I don't know, it's really dirty, filthy, I can't think of it. I heard a lot of Baha'is when they went to Africa, they gave them this, uh, you know, they loved them too much, they gave them blood and they had to drink it, they drank it. That might have not been right, but they didn't want to break uh, somebody's heart. So they act like a teacher. Won't be the prescription. Okay, a little bit different. Yeah, all right. It's getting close. All right. Continue. If any of the utterances of this servant may not be comprehended or may lead to perturbations, no, may lead to doubt, the same must be inquired of again, and no doubt may linger in the meaning. Uh, be clear as the face of the beloved one shining from the glorious station. These journeys have no visible ending in the world of time, but severed wayfarer, no detached wayfarer, if invisible, confirmation descended upon him and the guardian of the cause. <laughs> uh, assist him, change the guardian of the cause to the divine guardian. Assist him may cross this seven stage in seven steps, nay, rather in seven breath, nay, rather in a single breath, if God will and desire it. And this is of his grace and such of his servants as he pleaseth. Again, you know, these words have to be translated, they have to be interpreted. God is not pleasing somebody over another person. You have to understand, my friends. Uh, <clears throat> God has created ways. There isn't a way in nature. So you can't tell me that if somebody went and choose, uh, chose a better method to a discovery and he discovered it faster than this other guy, so God was with him more. No, he just found a different way, faster way, okay? There are uh, a lot of uh, ways that people can actually get there. But definitely this is not nothing to do with the time to say, okay, after a year or two or seven or eight or nine, I will get there. This is directly dealing with the issue of decisions. There is no spiritual education. This is a wrong word. There is a spiritual information, there's a spiritual things about what happened to Baha'i faith. You can say all of that to people. That may not change them at all. Because the spirituality for which you reckon you go to heaven or hell is personal decisions. You make a decision to be a bad guy or not or a good guy. It's up to you. This is why it is completely outside of the matter of time. It's a decision. You decide now and you, you're there. You don't, you won't. Okay, let me continue. 
uh, yeah, guardian of the cause. I don't know why she wrote that down. It does not mean Shoei Effendi, uh, which she goes with the capital guardian, or any other guardian in the future. This is not a reference. Vali Yaam here is not a reference to a person. Okay, this is uh, the pro this is a reference to a opportunity. This is a reference to the possibilities in the nature. Okay, there's no matter of luck either here. Because the way it looks, some people are, you know, well, God is discriminating with other. God pleases them. No, God does not please one person or the other person, but He has different ways. If you choose that way, you go faster. If you choose this way, we go along. It's up to you. Okay. So, we continue. They who soar in the heaven of singleness, no, those who soar in the divine unity and reach the sea of absolute. I don't know why she likes to put this word absolute for tajrid. It's not. A tajrid does not mean absolute. Singleness. And reach to the sea of absolute, attain to the ocean of singleness, reckon this city, which is, I change it as, the station of life, change life, immortality in God, as the furthermost state, I changed it to climax degree, of mystic knowers, and the farthest homeland, I change it to ultimate abode of the lovers. But to this evanescent one, he's talking himself as an evanescent, you know, low destitute one, of the mystic ocean, this station is the first gate of heart, settle, that is man's first entrance to the city of heart. And the heart is endowed with four stages which would be uh, recounted should a kindred soul be found. So he didn't want to say, I'm going to tell you right now, where are these four stages? That Baha'u'llah didn't like to talk about it at that time. So, as Baha'u'llah says, the first thing to get to God, according to him, is very clear here. It's just, just you have to know the love. You gotta get into heart. Love, love, love. Okay, a lot of people said, how do I get into love? Love is given by God through the instinct, through the matter. You see the face of the girl, you say, oh, I love her. I go to her. If you have sex with her, your cash in is gone, done. You are not anymore inspired by her. If you stop having sex with her, the desire is material desire, it's sex desire. But you say, no, 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 I want to change the sex into something else. By not having sex with her, you want to see her though, because you want it. This desire of wanting her, which is sex, but you say no to sex, it turns into love gradually. Now she becomes your beloved. Immediately, you've seen it, all of you, when you're in love, you're nicer, you're funner, you're kinder, you're more open-minded, isn't it? That's what love does. However, first it comes through the sex and the instinct. It could also be later on. Some people, they fall in love with, I don't know, Mahatma Gandhi, and this another fellow who wants to uh, do something with Tibet, or other people, role models. This is the stage one where you have an object. Through that object, you enter to the heart. It becomes a gate. The second stage is when the object goes away. It becomes the subject. It's no longer that you love the beautiful, but now you love the beauty. No longer that you love the freedom fighters, but you like the freedom fightings. Okay? So from this personalities and persona that they use your instinct, your inner conscience or whatever, they lead you to go into your heart. This is stage one. You go with the object, then it changes to the subject. Because you go to her and she does this and that and that and you get totally destroyed your love and everything else. So I've got to stay away from the subject in order to understand object. Now fall in love with love. Fall in love with the quality, not those who possess the quality. Stage two, stage three, is now out of this loving love, you finally find the real beloved. First is the virtual beloved. Then it becomes the true love. 
then it becomes the real beloved, not virtual, not virtuous. No, not virtuous, no, not virtual. It becomes the real beloved. This time, because you know you are in love with, I don't know, let's say, we'll give you a name. Anybody, your role model. It's all because you wanted to get there. Now you achieved what he did. He's no longer for you a role model anymore. You saw that the deficiency in him and this and that. You grow out of him. At this point, anybody else cannot just come and get you. You have to be a real serious beloved. This time it is Baha'u'llah. So the manifestation of God becomes the third stage when your love really get in there. Fourth stage is that you understand that manifestation of God is not for you to obey Him. He is for you to copy Him, to become Him. He's not seeking obedience from you. God is not sick or psycho. Christ says in the Bible, I want you to like me, to become children of God. Look at me, he says. I haven't come here to make you all to obey me. I come here to create a template so you can become like me. This is why the manifestation of God, they suffer exactly the life of a man. Everything. Because so there's no excuse for other people to say, oh no, I don't have his power. If I had his power, I would have done it. No. He has your body, he has all the pains, all the suffering. Baha'u'llah clearly talk about the stress, distress, and happiness. A lot of things is going through it, just like us. He wants to sell us that, hey, listen, I'm, I'm, not, I'm a man now. I'm doing it. So. so if you can get to that stage, not loving Baha'u'llah, but loving to become Baha'u'llah, that's the fourth stage. That is this seven values. So again, first, you have an object, a role model, a beloved, that is objective, then becomes a subject, becomes the actual quality, that you love the beauty, you love the love. You're wondering, you don't know who's the real beloved, then you cross the third level, you love the manifestation of God. But the fourth stage, you want to become Him. Again, by Him, guys, again, becoming Baha'u'llah, meaning to have a connection to Him, become a TV where he manifests himself on that TV. So those who want to talk to Baha'u'llah, they can talk to you. You're a TV showing him right there. Okay. All right. This is the fourth stage. When the pen set to picturing this stage, it broke into pieces and the page was torn. This is from Rumi. So, and then it says, Salam. Very strange. Why would she just come salam? Salam, there's a word, it has to be va salam. I don't know why the va, va means and. And salam has become just salam. This means the end, literally. When Persian they talk, even in the during the days, when they finish, they go va salam. That means that's the end. <laughs> that's it. So, actually, the tablet is finished here. Now, he comes to a PS and he continues. He says the topic, Vassalam, it's over, it's ended. That's it, Baha'u'llah says. So, Vassalam means the end. That's it. Then he continues. Oh, my friend, many a hound pursued this gazelle of the desert, no, of the needs of oneness. Many a talent clawed at this trash of the eternal garden, petalous raven, do lie in wait for this bird of the heavens of God and the huntsman of envy stalk at this deer of the meadow of love. O Sheikh, make of thine effort a glass. Perchance it may shelter this flame from contrary, no, from opposing winds. Albeit this light doth long to be kindled in the lamp of the Lord and to shine in the globe of the spirit, for the head raised up in the love of God will certainly fall by the sword and the life that is kindled with the longing will surely be sacrificed and the heart with which remember the love of 
the loved one will surely brim the beloved with the blood, how well it is said. Live free of love, for its very peace is anguish, its beginning is pain, its end is death. Eshkhalian falhub rahatihi ana, for awalihi sukman wa akhirihi qatlan. So, he tells us that, let's try to check this flame. In order to keep this flame, brothers and sisters, we all have to become Baha'i. Then we can keep the flame in. Okay, number two. Definitely within the Baha'i faith, keep the Baha'i administration and Baha'i world order of Baha'u'llah or everything will up, fall apart. Okay. The members of the local spiritual assembly are not local assembly. Local assembly is the machine of God. These members are given the token to drive and sometimes they hit the wall anyways. The national spiritual assembly is a divine institution of God. Its members are not. Same as universal laws of justice. Universal laws of justice is the institution of Baha'u'llah. Without it, there can't be no Baha'i faith. And the universal laws of justice will have to have the universal laws of guardianship to work hand in hand like a mother and father together. It will come in the future. But if you do not work within this framework, you are not protecting it. You are not what he says, Baha'u'llah says. What does he say? He says that. Um, I just read it for you. Make of thine effort a glass. Perchance it may shelter this flame. That glass is these two things. First of all, everything has to be within the Baha'i faith. Then in the Baha'i faith, it has to be in the Baha'i administration. And uh, there's a lot of word behind me that I'm against universal, local, spiritual, all of that. That's this whole total biggest bullshit I've ever heard. And I don't know why these things are there. Probably that's why I'm here. But uh, I am totally obedient to the local, to the national and to the universal laws of justice, but they cast me off, they don't want my obedience right now, I'm even obedient to that, okay? So, finally, we're going to go to this. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to say that a little bit here, when the explanation is, it's, you know, when you become fallen in love, you'll die and this and that. I've never heard in my love or seen a famous man to be a spiritual. When I went there, I found him a total an imbecile, always. When it was a physicist, that was not the case. A sermon to a spiritual, found that the spiritual people are not very well known. Man has not reached, unfortunately, to the level that they actually celebrate, majority of them, I mean, at least, the true persons, the true spiritual men. They're not capable. They're just love them. So, the moment the guy is famous for a spiritual is not. So stage one is that you're not known. A stage two, if you come a little bit better, then you become infamous. Instead of they call you manifestation of God, they call you manifestation of Satan. They think you're enemy. Then it goes further, the very friend of yours, like in my case, the Baha'is, they think also you're enemy. So I've gone to three levels. The fourth level I haven't gone there. I hope I, it might happen one day. I actually, that would be egotistic too. Uh, I hope it never happens. That the Baha'is will decide to kill me. In many ways they know what to do. They haven't done it yet. That means I'm not that spiritual yet. Because Baha'u'llah says my head should be cut off if I'm really uh, that spiritual. Good. I don't want to be that spiritual and the Baha'is are safe. You know, let's all of us together go up. I don't want to be up on the top lonely. Finally, uh, <clears throat> Baha'u'llah talks about an acronym here uh, of a sparrow, which is Gonjeshk. We say Gonjeshk, apparently in the past they didn't say G, they say K, Gonjeshk. And it consists of K, N, J, S, H, or SH, and then K. It's like an acronym. Uh, those days, there were methodical ways, the white man, they used the methods to create things. Uh, Sufis in Iran, in Islam, they had methods how to get to the spiritual way. One of them was this word. 
Instead, the thought that Tao was expressed as the interpretation of the common speech of the bird that is called in Persian Gonjesh, Sparrow or Konjesh were considered. Tao appears to be well grounded in the mystic truth. However, on every plane to every letter a meaning is allotted which related to that plane. Indeed, the wayfarer find it a secret in every name, a mystery in every letter. In one sense, these letters refer to holiness. K or G says K or G refer it to Kufi. I don't know why she says Kufi. Is Kaf. K-A-F, kaf, which means free, kaf, free yourself, free that's free thyself from that which thy passion desire, then advance unto thy Lord. Noon, which is N, referred to nazze, nazze, means purify. Let's purify thyself from all else safe, you know, may surrender, surrender thy life in his love. Jim, <coughs> You think a guy's name is Jim. It's actually Jim, J double E M, Jim. Jim is the letter J in Persian. Jim is John Ebb, which means draw back. That is, draw back from threshold of the true one if thou still possesses earthly attributes. Sheen, not Shen. Sheen is Oshkor, means that. Thank thy Lord, and his blessed he may bless thee in his heaven, albeit in the world of oneness. This heaven is the same as... Oh, right, this is nice. Eh? Uh, <laughs> he may bless thee in his heaven, albeit in the world of oneness, this heaven is the same as his earth. Yeah, it might be heaven, but you're in earth already. As I told you, graduated. You, are, you passed the seven valleys already. But you're still alive, you're not dead. And finally, the last K, Kaf, referred to, again, she, it is written here, Kufi. It has to be Kafar. Kafar, you know. Take off, you know. Kafar. Take off from thyself the wrapping of the limitation that thou mayest come to know what thou hast not known of the state of sanctity. For thou to hearken to the melodies of the mortal, of this mortal now, of this selfless bird, then wouldest thou seek out the undying, no, the eternal chalice, and pass by every perishable cup. Peace be upon those who walk in the right path. All right. I gave you a little bit of explanations what these things are, but I'm going to have to speak to you one more time. And I am well about one hour to bring the whole grand scheme of why is this revealed and what's the purpose of God in uh, these things. A little bit uh, more explanation is required. Okay, my friend, time is 12.10. I'm getting bored, it seems that I'm just talking to myself, isn't it? But uh, there are people uh, that are coming <clears throat> after our generation. These videos are so uh, vital for them because they have a sickness too. Their sickness is this, they cannot find a man around them and they have to refer to the past. So, for that future, I'm coming now uh, to bring up these things. But if you break the uh, tradition that you have had, your mankind, you white people might do it. You're a bit different. Abdul Baha would have been put in prison, killed, but not in America. Americans have said, no, we're not fools, we know who he is. So, if you can understand who I am, <clears throat> And what's my uh, story here? Then you would know everything that I told you is brand new. It's not written in any book. Even Baha'u'llah has not said it. This is a new concept that uh, somehow it comes to me uh, when I speak. Or shall I say that it comes to the computer. That's all the knowledge of the Internet of God. 